Greetings friends, on Christmas Day YouTube decided to remove over 2,000 subscribers from my channel and they followed it up on Boxing Day by removing 500 more. So if you've come across this video, please make sure you are still subscribed. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing the videos. That is the only way yours truly and your favorite YouTuber can stay competitive against the giant corporations that YouTube has decided to prioritize over the past year on this platform was before we even started it that it was it was a given that we were going to no matter what choice we made it was going to you know there would be factions but the so-called fandom menace yes nerderotic.com here we are after the fall of skywalker and the disney star wars spin has already begun and this comes as a surprise to no one jar jar abrams recently gave an interview with the bbc you know that state-sponsored corporation from across the pond in the lovely uk and the fandom menace was once again name dropped when discussing fans and however you feel about that hashtag there is no doubt that it's been effective and it has a permanent place in pop culture history why because they continually call out disney star wars on their fibs and this is why disney star wars finds themselves in the pickle they are in and we will get into that but let's start with the interview and we're going to go to the shiltastic comicbook.com star wars director jar 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 Abrams made the rise of Skywalker knowing it would be divisive and controversial. And I will defend Jar Jar on this. I don't think he was given enough time to make this film, but ultimately he said yes. And the worst decisions in this film were his, despite some of the spin you hear coming from leaks. Director Jar Jar Abrams went into production Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I think you meant went into the production of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker knowing it would be divisive and controversial. No matter what choices were made during the making of Episodic Saga's final chapter, of the Episodic Saga's final chapter, comicbook.com, and I have been kicked out of three high schools. Abrams, who previously defended Star Wars enthusiasts when he said fans of the franchise shouldn't be looked at as an adversary, did you hear that, Disney Star Wars story group and Kathleen Kennedy? Admits he wasn't worried about fan reaction to what has been touted as the conclusion to the Skywalker saga because he expected a mix of opinions, all equally valid, to swirl around the fall of Skywalker and you can't please everyone. Plus, I suspect having a half a billion dollars in the bank account eases a lot of problems. Everything, Abrams told BBC Radio 5, when asked to identify the part of Skywalker he lost the most sleep over, the logistics of shooting, the set pieces, because the scope of the pictures is pretty huge. So how we were going to do any of this was enormous. Obviously, the narrative of the film, what we were saying, what we were going to do, just because no matter what we did, we knew it was going to be divisive and controversial. Yes, I agree. Making George Lucas' Star Wars pointless is a controversial decision. Making the journeys of Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker meaningless is a controversial decision. Now remember, he said he worried about everything, except for this. Asked if he was worried about Skywalker proving divisive, Abrams answered, I wasn't worried about it. We knew at the very beginning, it was before we even started it, that it was a given that no matter what choice we made, it was going to upset some fans and there would be factions. It was before we even started it, that it was a, it was a given that we were going to, no matter what choice we made, it was going to, you know, there would be factions. But the so-called fandom menace. Yes. And that's nice that the fandom menace gets acknowledged by the giant state-sponsored corporation that is the BBC across the pond in the good old UK. And BBC, you will be re-familiarized with the fandom menace come January 1st when Doctor Who premieres. More on that later. As far as Jar Jar Abrams knowing he would divide fans before the rise of Skywalker, well, he knew that before The Force Awakens. And the spin right now is J.J. just got caught in the middle of what Rianne Johnson created 
created, and Kathleen Kennedy and the Disney Star Wars Story Group. And that might be a believable scenario if it wasn't for Bad Reboot being responsible for a lot of what is going on in Hollywood. Look no further than what's going on with Star Trek and Star Trek Discovery. That's his boy, Alex Kurtzman. Look no further than The Wolkman on HBO. That's his boy, Damon Lindelof. These are all part of a group of like-minded people running through Hollywood using some of our favorite franchises as their own personal political platform. I get it. Sci-fi, comics, fantasy have always used politics and allegory, and I am fine with that for the most part. But this has been something different, and we all know that. The one positive that The Fall of Skywalker did show me was there could have been a good story told with that cast. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because they didn't have a plan for the story. They did have a plan, though, to systematically deconstruct the character of Luke Skywalker for political reasons. Like I said in my review, I am done discussing the plot or any theories from Disney Star Wars because they're pointless, they're meaningless, and it's because of what they did to Luke Skywalker. They certainly fit him into a narrative. It just wasn't George Lucas's or Star Wars. It was Disney's and that story group and Rianne Johnson's and yes, even Jar Jar R. Abrams, when given the opportunity to make it right, he just made it permanent. Forgive me if you've been subscribed to this channel for any amount of time because you know this, but I have to state the obvious for somebody who might be new and might ask the question, what are you talking about with Luke Skywalker? Well, I'll start out by saying I would respect Hollywood a lot more if they would just tell us the truth. They are trying to make the fans pay literally and figuratively for Hollywood's past sins. Luke Skywalker remains the best example of this. Was it a smart storytelling decision to make him the bad father figure, or was that just typical Hollywood? And then when the fans complain, they say, we were subverting your expectations. When the fans complain some more, they throw their hands up in the air and go, well, you can't satisfy everyone, when we all know it was a deliberate decision to push a narrative. Hollywood monetizing their past failures. Someone just asked me, you know, did you go about trying to please everyone? And I, I, I said, not that I would want that to be the case, that shouldn't be the approach, but how would you do that? What is the way to please everyone? Like, is there is no fan that represents all the fans. There, everyone has their own opinion and whether or not you're part of a group or not, you know, it, everyone is right. Everyone has their opinion. Who would ask anybody something like that? Hey, Fred. Do you go about your life trying to please everyone? Everyone knows the answer to that question, and everyone knows that this is spin. Nobody goes into a movie trying to please every single person, but it's pretty easy to please all the Star Wars fans. Bring out Luke Skywalker at peak Jedi, have him crash a couple of Star Destroyers, and then go out like a hero. That would be pleasing most Star Wars fans. I don't think too many people would have had a problem with that. I'll ask you, general audience, what is more pleasing? Watching a grumpy Jake Skywalker milking an alien manatee booby, or watching a heroic Luke Skywalker force battling a Dark Lord of the Sith? Do I wish, and this is far beyond a Star Wars issue, that opinion did didn't immediately go to outrage, didn't immediately go to attacking and cruelty. I think the sort of MO at the moment seems to be that people go to these crazy, hyperbolic, and often cruel states defending their politics, their nationality, their race, their sexual preference, the films they love. It's like you're not making a statement if you're not doing it in a vitriolic way, and I just think that's unfortunate, Abrams said. Star Wars is part of all of that, but we approach the story hopefully from the inside out, hoping that it would affect people and knowing that some people would love it and some wouldn't. I don't necessarily disagree with that statement, but I disagree entirely with who it was intended for. Jar Jar, repeat that 
holding up a mirror. And as a matter of fact, you can write it down and pass it to your friends, Rianne Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, and the entire Disney Star Wars story group. While you're at it, Jar Jar Abrams, not that it would do any good, pass a copy of that memo off to the gaslighting fools at the Access Media. You know, the ones who are losing clicks day by day to those of us here on YouTube. It looks like some of them are starting to come around and have bothered to ask some of the right questions, even though they know the answers to these questions because the fandom menace has been providing them for the last two years. Do I wish, and this is far beyond a Star Wars issue, that opinion didn't immediately go to outrage, didn't immediately go to attacking and cruelty. I think that there's a sort of the, the MO at the moment seems to be that, you know, people go to these crazy hyperbolic and, and often cruel states defending their politics, their nationality, their, you know, race, their sexual preference, you know, the films they love, the stories, they, it's like everything is, you're not making a statement if you're not doing it in a vitriolic mm -hmm. way. And I just think that's unfortunate. Star Wars is part of all of that. I wanted you to hear that in Jar Jar's own words, because it sounds innocent enough, except that was directed towards the fans. And this is where we get to the bottom line of the fandom menace. And just in case there's somebody new here to briefly reset the Fandom Menace is a hashtag for a large group of fans who call out Disney on their bullshit. And Disney Star Wars has been lying from the very beginning, and they have been lying to this day. So here we are now that the Last Jedi spin and damage control is now said and done in the very early stages of the Fall of Skywalker excuses spin and damage control. And the reason Disney Star Wars is in this pickle is because they were lying, like I said, from the very beginning. The original promise that we would get the original three, Han, Luke, and Leia together on screen, getting into adventures, doing heroic things for any amount of time, was a lie. It wasn't spoken. Disney didn't have to do a damn thing, but it was still deception. A lie by insinuation because everybody on the planet thought they would get the original three back together again because it's the smart business move. It would sell the most stuff, but they didn't do it anyway. They made a deliberate decision to spread these three characters over three films. And the question has to be asked, why? Was it because the actors were pissed off that they were sold to Disney? Just a reminder, when Disney purchased Star Wars from George Lucas, he had signed Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher, and he didn't tell them that they were about to be working for Disney. Was it due to the fact that Disney didn't have any faith in their new characters and they needed the old ones as a nostalgic backup? Or, and this one is the hardest to accept, but most likely the truth, did they serve up two of the three original characters, because they just so happen to be white males, on the altar of agenda, destroying Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, two of the greatest characters in the history of cinema and science fiction, to push a narrative. If you gotta kill Han Solo, fine, but what is a smarter story decision? What would please the most fans? Han Solo needlessly dying to his crybaby son, or maybe Han Solo sacrificing himself to save the resistance or save his son. What would sell more action figures? Han Solo in bad dad mode with needless death action, or a Han Solo final run playset? And the evidence to support that Disney Star Wars wanted the original characters in their films as little as possible, you need to look no further than the screen time. We'll start out with General Princess Leia Organa, the character they had so much reverence for within the narrative and behind the scenes and in all the interviews. She was given 19 minutes and 15 seconds of screen time out of all three films, which totaled 431 minutes. Luke Skywalker, the main character, the one whose saga we are ending, he got a grand total of 20 five minutes of screen time in 431 minutes. Now, out of those three reasons I just gave you, again, I think it's the last one. I do believe that Han and Luke were sacrificed on the altar of agenda, but the other two could be true as well. Maybe all three. Again, this is just my speculation. And I know what has been said publicly and usually 
whatever is said publicly out loud, especially from a repurposer or a creative or an actor in Hollywood, you go the opposite direction and generally you get the truth. Like when Jar Jar Abrams said Rianne Johnson didn't derail the trilogy, he really meant he derailed the trilogy. And of course, we know in the lead up to the fall of Skywalker, Kathleen Kennedy gave a couple of unfortunate interviews where she told a couple of lies. First, she stated there was no source material for Star Wars, ignoring the thousands of comics and hundreds of novels. And then she said that Palpatine was part of the plan from the very beginning when we know that isn't true. And recently, Disney was caught with their pants down. Disney edited out a kiss at the end of The Fall of Skywalker between two of age consenting adults for two countries where that sort of thing is illegal proving they do not believe in your cause. Books are currently being written, one by Ichibaka and one by Stephen Walton, about the fandom menace and everything that's gone on with Disney Star Wars, and I'm sure more will be written in the future because this is a lesson for Hollywood. Don't lie to your fans. Disney Star Wars is that kid caught in a lie that continues to lie and just digs itself a deeper hole. We've seen this happen with a lot of franchises. Star Trek, Doctor Who, which I will be covering January 1st, 2020 live, stay tuned. But Disney Star Wars is the biggest and the first to face some serious consequences. This is what happens when you craft your story around an agenda. But it's undeniable, Disney Star Wars worked really hard to not please everyone. But it appears Disney has achieved their goal. They took something timeless and made it relevant, dated, and forgettable. And I hope to forget about the fall of Skywalker as soon as possible. And I believe Disney Star Wars would like to forget about this mess as well. And we can both turn the page. Again, I need to remind you to please check and see if you are still subscribed to the channel. YouTube recently ran its cleanse of the platform, getting rid of old accounts and bots, and there is always collateral damage. I've already gotten three messages this morning from people who said they were unsubscribed from my channel. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you have it, if you liked what you heard. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long, and I will see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com, please subscribe.